Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Lief. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Hamburg. And today we're gonna talk about this little camera. We're gonna see if it's any useful, who is it for, and should you buy it? All right, let's jump right in. So for everyone who doesn't know what this is, this is the Rito 3D camera. It's a film camera. It has these three lenses which all shoot at the same time and each of them shoot half of a frame. So basically every time you press the shutter, it will take one and a half frames of a normal 35 millimeter film roll. What you can do afterwards in post is stitch all of these three pictures together, find a focus point and then it will have this kind of 3D glitchy effect. You probably have seen this effect in many videos like Muramasa or in the hip hop track called Broccoli. The only other camera I can think of that kind of emulates these effects is the Nimslo 3D and the Nishika 2000. For everyone who shoots a lot of film, you probably already have heard of it, but maybe it was kind of too expensive and too hard to find one to actually get it for such a gimmick. So when I scrolled through Instagram and an ad popped up for this camera, I was immediately intrigued. They did really good marketing. They had these great looking pictures and I immediately thought, all right, I have to get it, even if it's just for a gimmick, but I really like the effect, so I'm gonna try it out. All right, so let's start with the exterior. Unfortunately, it took two months to arrive because it was shipped from Hong Kong. I live in Germany, so customs are very thorough here. So it took a long ass time to get here, but nevertheless it arrived. So that's nothing the company has anything to do with. But right off the bat, when you unpack it, you immediately feel how cheap and plasticky it feels. So the package is nice and everything, but once you actually hold the camera, you will have this kind of awkward feeling towards it because it does feel like a toy. For someone who shoots a lot of film, this will feel very unusual because mostly film cameras are used to build very well because they are still used today after 40 or 50 years. So this will feel very unusual and very awkward if you're used to having those great sturdy film camera bodies. One of the most important things for this camera to actually work in the post-processing um, is that the film has to be transported very evenly. But unfortunately, the film transport is, as everything else, made out of plastic. So my guess is after about 10 rolls of film, this will probably break down on you. And even now I have very much trouble in transporting the film like this because I feel like if I put too much force in it, it will break. And since I'm a very tall, very big guy, this this feeling is very unsettling for me. And the last thing I want to talk about, about the build quality of this thing, is the actual lenses. So they immediately tell you that it's not glass that act that's actually put in here, but um, acrylic, I think optics or something it's called. And you can actually see it. it. The pictures are not very sharp, they're not of great quality, but I'm getting ahead of myself, that's going to be the next topic. But either way, I think if all of your all of your build is actually made out of plastic or very cheap products, how good can the camera actually be? Now let's talk about the actual image quality. So I took this for a spin, I took, it, I, took, I took mostly pictures with the flash on because I think that's kind of the real life application to do this kind of nightlife lifestyle shot or at least that's my application I intend to use it for, especially when I want to put it into music videos I'm producing or if I'm shooting something that's kind of in that direction, I can use it with the flash, which is actually a great option because if you want to take the same kind of pictures with a Nimslo 3D or the Nishika, you actually have to buy the flash separately and that will be kind of expensive. So I thought that that was a very good point and argument for the camera to get it because the flash is actually built in and you activate it like this a little red light will appear and you know you're ready to go. So you can just press the shutter and go for it. So in this camera, you can't really do anything about the shutter or the aperture. 
it's, uh, it shoots always at an aperture of f10, so everything in the frame will be sharp. Um, the flash actually helps with the, the correct exposure, so you kind of have to guess it, but at the same time, it's kind of all right and it's accurate, so you won't get anything that's too underexposed or too overexposed. Unfortunately, what does happen is that the image does not get evenly exposed. So while you have the left frame that's the exact exposure you want it to be because it's right next to the flash, the lens on the right that shoots the half frame will be a little bit underexposed. And if you're shooting on a scanner with the kind of same exposure, when you do the post-production, you will have this kind of exposure shift in which the image will get darker and lighter, which you don't really want. So now that we talked about that, let's talk about real life application, right? So for me as a professional photographer, I use cameras as tools. I have this image in my head that I want to actually make and the tool being this camera has to actually allow me to do that. With this camera, it really reminds me of these throwaway 35 millimeter cameras that you get at the drugstore because it kind of feels like an experiment. You can't really guess what you're gonna get. You can't really rely on this as a really sturdy, good camera tool, but instead it's more like a toy, which gives you kind of fun and experimental images, but not necessarily helps you in achieving your vision, which the Nimslo 3D and the Nishika do. But, at the same time, I have to say that I had really much fun shooting with this camera and the kind of giddiness that comes from going to the developer and getting to see your roll of film and then afterwards post-processing it was kind of really fun. So on the one hand, I can say that for professional use, this is probably not very good, but on the other side, I had really much fun in dealing with this kind of camera. And especially on music video shoots, if you have done a lot of them, you tend to try a lot of different things. And if you have a assistant with you and you can just give him this camera and tell him to go shoot the models, the actors and so on, and then afterwards import this into a video, then you will probably have some really fun and experimental kind of images that people have not seen as much before. So in that case, I would say, if you don't mind spending around a hundred dollars for a gimmick it's probably good i mean you will have fun with it you will use it probably for like 10 to 15 rolls then you will put it on the shelf and it will look good so i think for that kind of purpose just get it it's it's really easy it's fun and it's kind of a good gimmick but if you are searching for something that will give you even constant great image quality results, don't buy this camera. It's just too cheap of build quality. The flash does not really work professionally. So I would say for professional use, this is very, very limited. This is not the end of the video. I want to talk actually about something that I think the company itself did very well. They saw something that they saw this little niche market of this 3D photography and thought to themselves, all right, how can we do this and how can we create this camera that actually enables photographers to do this kind of style without having the hassle of searching for a good quality Nimslo 3D or Nishika 2000 because let's face it, they're not being produced anymore. So there's limited pieces in the world and everybody just tries to get these especially in these kind of ages of trends where one videographer does something and everyone else wants to copy it. So it's really hard for people to get these cameras. And I think the company actually did really great in developing something that comes very close to it. But I think they did make a mistake in the price point. In $100, that's a bit much because you can just you can just spend a little bit more and get more bang for your buck. Um, so I think that's the one wrong thing they did. I think if they would charge something like 50 to 75, that would be more appropriate. The second thing I think they did really well is build a software for post-processing the frames into this glitchy kind of effect. Since you already take so much time out of your day to take these pictures, then develop them, get them back from the developer, scan them yourself, 
and then actually have to post process them in Photoshop into this GIF takes so much time. So for a company to think about the post processing and how they can enable videographers to do it kind of in a more easy, accessible way, that is great because I don't want to take any more time out of my day to actually stitch them together in Photoshop. So I think that was really great. And if more companies like that would be so co consumer centric and in this kind of problem solving attitude, we'd have a lot more of great companies that would create products that was more fit for the consumer. So they get more consumers, of course, and sell more. So I think that's a very win, very much a win win situation. And I think that has to be acknowledged. The one downside of it they sell it in the app store for seven dollars and that adds on to the 100 dollars you had to pay for the camera itself and for me i had to pay an import tax because it came from china so that was like another additional 15 bucks so it comes to around to 120 bucks for me in total for the whole package to actually start shooting which again is a very high price point for such a little toyish camera but nevertheless, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I think the company did right, what they can improve on. And so you guys know kind of what I think of the camera and can judge if you want to buy it or if you don't. So that's it from my kind of side about this camera. If you want to know anything more, please leave a comment down in the description. I will get back to you as fast as possible. I hope it kind of helps you to kind of think if you want to get this camera or not. Please check out some of my other playlists. I do a little bit of stuff just for here, just for YouTube, next to my commercial work. So if you would like to see something, just check it out, subscribe, and we'll see each other next time. Das Vidanya.